Jake Hayner, third in the nation passing. The the nation, like the interview requests, were pouring in probably five weeks ago. Yeah, it was wild. Got his own day. They gave him a day in Fresno, right? I, I was told by former Fresno State proclamation football alumni and players that after he beat UCLA, he's like he's bigger than Michael Jordan in the town. And as we know, <laughs> Michael Jordan spent some time in Fresno. You know, he used to come through in the eighties. So that's a big deal. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean. Talk about a crazy week. It's just uh, just having the opportunity to play here and and play with the group of guys that we got here at Fresno State has been a blessing for me. And just going off of everything that I went through, it's it's kind of crazy to just see it all turn out like this and continue to uh, go on the Drake or the the great track we got right now and just keep getting more wins, man. Well, you're talking to two guys that grew up in Davis, California, and in Davis, yeah. California, the athletic community. I was watching uh, the Oregon State game, and, and Ali Odi was on the sideline. I had forgot he coached, you know, obviously at Oregon, but he's a UC Davis guy, and he's boys, you know, you know Ali Odi, Ali Odi, Chris Peterson. Yeah. You know, they're yeah. they're very intellectual, and you're talking two Fresno State guys. So the Boise State Chris Peterson, I mean, this guy was like Nick Saban of non Power yeah. Five at the time, and when he recruits you to me. It's cool to see you at Fresno State, but you remind me uh, of a Boise guy in their heyday. You know, your skill set's different, but Kellen Moore, who I think his brother's you know, the wide receiver coach on your staff, I don't, yeah. you know, you were younger, but Kellen's one of the best college football players I've ever seen. Yeah. And, I, you know, I, Chris Peterson, if he signs off on you at quarterback, to me that that says a lot. Yeah, no. Um, growing up, watching Kellen Moore was obviously one of – he was – a big hero for me growing up. I loved watching the guy. He was awesome. Just seeing the way he, he dissected defenses and obviously talking to Kirby now and having him on our staff, just talking about the way he prepared and the way they see the game is, is really cool. But just being able to play under coach Pete was, was a, was an honor and still to have a really good relationship with him now and still talk to him, you know, every once in a while is, is cool for me to have and is obviously a great outlet for me. Um, you know, just to pick his brain on certain things and to just keep up to date with, you know, our relationship in life in general. Because he, he's one of the guys that really cares. I think he really generally cares about a lot of his former players and, and everything outside of football. So you think he's coming back? Just loves it too much? I don't think so. I think he no. loves I think he, I, I, it would be cool to see him come back, but the dude's enjoying life right now, it sounds like, after I talked to him. Um, I talked to him a week after the UCLA game. He let stuff die down a little bit and gave me a call and we talked for like 20 minutes and he's just enjoying what he's doing right now. Doing the, the Fox gig is cool for him and being able to see his kids and being around his wife. And I think he's just enjoying being himself and not having that added stress of being a college coach um, is something that he kind of enjoys right now. You know, it's funny me and guy were talking before we hopped on that, you go to your rivals page and I was expecting, cause you went to Washington a high school. I was expecting to see, you know, all these PAC 12 big programs, but it was just kind of Washington and then a bunch of other. Randoms. I've never seen a rivals page like this. <laughs> how, it was wild, man. How, how did you get off? Explain, off. explain to me your high school career to your recruitment, how, how this happens. Hold on. Just for people that are listening to this and not seeing it, the offers are UW just, you know, they just gone to the college football playoff. Akron, Eastern Washington, Florida Atlantic, Hawaii, Middle Tennessee, Northern Arizona, Northern Colorado, Toledo. Yeah. I don't think yeah. there's ever been a rival's offer page like that. <laughs> no, it was it was kind of – yeah, it was all over the place. Um, when Washington called, I literally committed on the same phone call. It was when did they just, When did they call? Like your senior so, year? Uh, no, it was my junior year. I still committed really early. Um I committed a, basically a full year almost before signing day, like 10 months or something before signing day and was still in my end of my junior year. Um, it was just right when the elite 11 happened, that's when my recruitment really started to take off. Um, I got invited to the uh, elite 11 finals, got a bunch of big recognition from that. A lot of people were like, Oh yeah, this kid's undersized, but he can spin it. And, and we want to look at him. And the funny thing with you, dub, my mom always wanted me to go there, obviously, but they started recruiting me when I was a freshman. And uh, I went to Laney Junior College, threw in front of Coach Pete, Jonathan Smith, the former offensive coordinator. And they're like, hey, man, how old are you, a junior or whatever? And I was like, no, I'm a freshman. They're like, oh, wow. All right. So they talked to me for about a year, year and a half. And then they go dark. 
I didn't hear anything, nothing. I didn't talk to him for a year. And then I just all of a sudden get invited to the Elite 11. Coach Tedford was at the Elite 11 that day, happens to be a consultant a week after at UW and said, hey, you guys might want to shoot this kid a text again. They shoot me a text. I end up committing on the spot, and then it just kind of happened from there. Um, but the thing is, after I did commit, I, I got a you know a couple other calls from UCLA, Colorado, those schools. I said, "What's your interest on you know maybe flipping?" And I said, "I'm going to Washington." So, if they hadn't called, like, what was your plan? Were you going to go to one of these small schools? Had Fresno offered? Fresno didn't even offer. Uh, they said I was too too short. Um, a lot of the schools said I was too small. And I remember, I'll always remember this uh, because I had a lot of guys that uh, Nate Lamon, really good friend of mine, who's a Colorado middle linebacker, uh, and Eric Cromenhoek, who's a tight end at SC right now. They were big time guys. They had a bunch of Pac 12, SEC, ACC offers. Um, Pittsburgh, San Jose State, Arkansas all watched me throw to Eric. And I was spinning it. And they said, man, if you were 6'2", we wouldn't even be standing here right now. And I was like, oh, well, I'm 5'11". Sorry. And they said, oh, yeah. <laughs> and he said, oh, yeah, sorry. And they walked away, offered Eric, didn't even talk to me after that. And uh, it's just things like that I've had to go through and kind of overcome um, ever since I was a you know, freshman, sophomore in high school. But you, your Elite 11, Tua was there. Like, it's not like yeah. Tua, you were probably taller than Tua. I'm at the taller, Elite 11. I'm, I'm, I'm taller than Tua, yeah. Tua's right at six foot. I'm just oh, I'm just over six foot, probably six and a half. Um, Tua's two twenty though. I'm about two hundred, so yeah. I got to put on a few pounds when uh, whenever I decide to go on to the next level. But I, it's overrated at this point. A lot of the guys that are succeeding right now at the next level are five ten, five eleven, six foot, six one, and I don't think. An extra inch at six three, six four is going to really do much for you because the guy standing in front of you is six five, six six. So when you were at the Elite Eleven, that's Dilfer's thing, right? And Yogi and those guys. So you're there. Yeah. Two is there. Like I would imagine, there are several other quarterbacks that are either now in the NFL or playing high level. Or was it kind of? Fromm was there. Mon was there. Who else was there? Um, Tua. Dylan McCaffrey. Dylan McCaffrey. Um, Davis Jack Mills. Tears. Oh. Yep. Davis Mills, Jack Sears. Uh, there's some guys I'm leaving out that definitely got drafted high. I mean, that uh, Mac Jones was my partner. Um, yeah, I mean, it was just, yeah, all those You guys. and Mac? Me and Mac were doing the seven on seven together. Last day. Pretty well, you funny. throw the ball, you throw the ball better than Mac, and he was going to Alabama, right? Hey, man. Hey, I, Mac's a great I'm player. Not, I'm not hating on Mac. I'm just saying I from an arm strength standpoint. I mean, yeah, I mean, people knock my arm. I don't know why they knock my arm, but I think I got a better than average arm and uh i, don't I mean know. you were I, that ucla game you were throwing bullets without really like you couldn't turning. thin it yeah you couldn't turn you could you had no torque yeah would you I, have like a yeah. deep would you bruise your hip what was going on i had a uh deep thigh contusion i had an oblique strain so i couldn't even rotate uh it was probably one of the the most painful things i've actually had to go through in a game and they were like checking me for internal bleeding after the game and everything like that. And it's hard to watch. Yeah. I, I didn't, cause right there on that touchdown on the third and goal, I hadn't thrown yet because I got hit right before and I didn't know that it was going to hurt to rotate. And I did. And I was like, Holy, that, oh, that doesn't, feel right. thank you. Yeah, no, it, it was. Had you see, had UCLA, they had just beat LSU, right? Yeah. So they had beat LSU. They were Obviously, coming off a bye. They're coming off a bye. bye. You guys, I think Fresno had beat them before that game three straight times. So it's like, you know, it's not like they were going to sleep on you. And, you know, you go to that game, you were down late and you had multiple drives to pull ahead. You were up big. We were up big. And the only thing we were talking about is like, because we just didn't want to end up being like Oregon again because we felt like we totally let that game slip away from us. Thought we played really well. And then, the turnover bug kind of just got to us and uh, we ended up blowing that game. And then turnovers again in the second half of UCLA, we find ourselves in the same situation. So just, just crazy. 
I mean that. I mean that moment for you obviously was huge. I mean, Kirk Herbstreit the next day had you ranked number one player of the week. I mean, it was just a big deal for the program yourself. The moment yeah. of you land there, it looks like you're dead. Uh, yeah. As Pat Hill says, you need to get up a little faster. <laughs> but uh, I, made, I, made, I made a little dramatic, yeah. But, <laughs> but you uh, were in pa- you were in pain. I mean, I let's... definitely was. Yeah, no, that was um, like I said, uh, the most amount of pain I've ever been in trying to throw football uh, on the football field. And even with the uh, adrenaline and all that going through my veins, I, I it was still after every throw. I was like, dude, this sucks. But did you feel afterwards like – like John and I, it's funny, we're talking about Derek Carr yesterday and just mm-hmm. how – like Derek has always – for a guy who, you know, was from Bakersfield and went to Fresno State and has always had this dream of being a franchise quarterback and has – now fulfilled that dream like he's always been a guy it seems like who plays from like positivity like love like he wants to have fun like it's really fun for him yeah you've had things work against you right like you've been overlooked you don't feel when i watch you tell me if i'm wrong like it doesn't feel like your motivation comes from i'm sure you have some chip but it feels Mm -hmm. like it's more like you liking to compete than it is you trying to prove people wrong but i I don't know like where does that yeah come from for you I just love playing the game. I love competing. And honestly, there's been so many people, so many doubters throughout my career that said I've never get to this point. And um, it's obviously cool to prove those people wrong and you want to do it. Um, But at at this point, I'm doing it for my family. I'm doing it for myself and just continuing to prove myself right. I know it sounds cliche and everything, but it's like, you know, you can play at a really high level. You know, you can do it. You believe in yourself. Got to keep slinging it, man. And, no, see, and that's, a gr- that's a great way to live, to be motivated by, like, belief. Yeah. I mean, you, you, there's going to be people who don't believe in you. If you stop believing in yourself, you're never going to you're never going to amount to anything. My dad always told me that. If you stop believing in yourself, it's over for you, buddy. Um, so I've, you know, stayed believing in myself and just continue to to prepare and, and grind and, and do all that. And the thing is, I, I really enjoy preparing, and I, and I love the – professional aspect of it um going in in the stadium staying late and and just preparing and knowing that a lot of other people aren't doing what i'm doing so just being fortunate to be in the position that i am playing with the guys that i'm playing with right now and living in you know living in the moment i was thinking about this once i realized you were coming on is like i I would say a decade ago and then always previously transferring was kind of weird you know it was usually a red flag on a kid and then you know think about some of the quarterbacks right now Kyler Murray transfer Baker Mayfield transfer Joe Burrow transfer Justin Fields transfer like all these guys transferred uh I think a lot of people listening it's becoming such an invoke the transfer portal can you explain you don't win the job Jacob Eason who an NFL player too you -hmm. know and and just that decision how you end up at Fresno State just that that whole process yeah it, it was definitely a tough situation um and, and Jacob had transferred before they had even seen me play anything. Like I hadn't even gone through a spring yet. I hadn't done anything. Um, and it was kind of just like, yeah, we're bringing this kid in. And and honestly, being one of the biggest recruits that Washington has ever brought in, I feel like it was kind of just a set in stone thing. And I have no problem with that. I mean, you bring a kid in who's a five star, the fans love and is obviously a really good player. You want to play him. You don't want to play some six foot slappy from California that just comes in on, you know, a filler scholarship. I mean, who who wants to see that? I, I'm being realistic. Um, it's college football, and those fans wanted to see him play, and um, and it was fine. I, I, I but the, I but that's not really Chris Peterson's. I, I know it's Boise's not Washington, but that's not really his history. You know, it's not, it, it's not. And I had felt like I had definitely done more than enough to earn the starting spot at that point in time with my teammates and um, and everything else, but. Uh, moving on was the best thing for me. I didn't want to do it at that point in time. Uh, I wanted to stay there and continue to slug it out because I knew that I could eventually be the starter that year. I, I truly believe that. Uh, and they were telling me that, you know, this could change in a week. This could change in two weeks. Uh, you're both going to play in the first game. We're going to see how it goes. But Jacob's going to start. And I was just like, you know, I don't think that's how it should be. I get it. You guys got to make your decision, but I'm going to make mine as well. And uh, my dad's like, son, I'm going to be a dad here. You need to get out of get out of that situation. Um, you can listen to me. You don't have, you know, you can do what you want. But, um, you know, my dad being the guy he is, he doesn't really like to step in. He likes me to make my own decision. 
uh, and, and be a man about it. But I knew deep down that that guy has seen a lot in his life and I had to trust him on this one. And uh, I just went with it and, and didn't look back. So how did what? it go to Fre- how, what it led to Fresno? Like how that what was that connection? Yeah, so obviously I'd known Jeff. Uh, my dad has known Jeff for probably 15 years now. Um, they have a really good relationship. And I wanted to kind of wait and see what other offers I was going to get because believe it or not, obviously, I'm sure you guys know there's a lot of kids out there that get infatuated with the power five thing. Um, I wanted to see what other power five schools were going to kind of, you know, come and look at me and see if there's other opportunities um, in that realm. And uh, my dad's like, why are you even wasting your time? You're going to Fresno State. And I was like, really? He's like, you're going to Fresno State. And I was like, okay. And I waited about a week. I waited about a week or so. He's like, you're an idiot if you don't go play for Jeff. And I was like, all right, let's do it. So I just said, you know what? I'm shutting it all down. I'm committing. I called Jeff. I said, let's do it. Uh, About a week later, I moved my stuff down to Fresno and I got an apartment and I was just waiting to get enrolled. Man, Fresno's had an incredible history of relationship quarterbacks, right? Like yeah. Sweeney, mm-hmm. Derek, obviously. You, yeah. I'm sure there's it, other guys, but it, it, I don't know what Trent's relationship uh, was. Yeah, it, it just how it played out. Um, just coming into a situation where I knew it was an offense that fitted me and, and was good for my skill set. And, uh, you know, at the time, coming to play for a coach that I knew I had a good relationship with and had produced talent and had developed quarterbacks. That was the big thing for me. I wanted to go somewhere with uh, a coach that developed quarterbacks and and had a really good track record at producing uh, talent to the next level. So a lot of people said when I transferred, I was just trying to get on the field and I knew I wasn't going to have an NFL future and and none of that was possible, but I I definitely wanted to try to, you know, develop and get myself better to try to have an opportunity to get to where I want to get to. So, so when you transfer to Fresno state from Washington today, you know, I know you have a family relationship, but is there like a promise? Like, you know, it happens in basketball. I mean, it happens in football too. Like you're going to be the starter or was it just one of those come here? You got a very good chance. How, how'd that work? Yeah, no, um, there was none of that. I, and I didn't want that because being promised something, it's just, that's not how it should be. Uh, going into it. I knew I was going to have to compete. Jeff said it was going to be a really good opportunity for me. Um, and that he loved the skill set that I had and 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 knew that I could come in and, and be an impact guy. So he said, hey, you're going to have to earn everything you get here, but I definitely think it's a great opportunity for you. Um, I think you're going to love the guys, and I think you're going to love Fresno. And I said, you know what? I'll, I'll count on myself and uh, come in, compete, earn the respect from everybody, work your tail off, and go from there. You're hitting it, it seems like, maybe at a perfect time, right? Like there was a time when any – quarterback who wasn't six three mm-hmm. or six two and a half and john would know better john was a scout like the conversation was like well uh, russell wilson's the exception that's it yeah and now i mean it's russell's not the exception anymore right i'm i i was watching the cardinal game the other day and they were talking about for kyler i think it might have been sanchez doing the game for mm-hmm. kyler just how television doesn't show what it's like to be a quarterback who can't see over six five six six offensive linemen Mm-hmm. and uh, I don't know, is that, a, is that, is explain to us, like, is that a challenge that you deal with? Is it easy for you to work around it? What, what is that like? Yeah. Um, the one thing that I've gotten from it, you, and the privilege that I have is being able to watch tape on some of the best guys to do it. Drew, uh, Russell, you know, Kyler, all those guys, Baker, they do a great job of finding throwing lanes. And I think for me being in the, you know, being in the shotgun and being in the pistol, um, you're five yards back already. You know, you're, you're seeing everything. You got everything in front of you. Um, but I definitely think that there's an art to finding throwing lanes, having different arm platforms, moving your feet to, uh, to try to, you know, find the throwing lane. Um, and that's why those guys are so good. You see them, you see Kyler manipulating people, manipulating defenders with his arm angle. Um, Drew did a really good job of moving his feet in the pocket to find throwing lanes. Russell does a little bit of both. So, it comes down to, you know, how you want to find those throwing lanes, how you want to manipulate defenders and and try to find the best platform to get the ball out. Uh, there's definitely times where I'm standing back there and you got a huge dude in front of you and you got to move, you know, try to find a lane. Um, but I feel like that happens with everybody. If you got a huge dude in front of you, you're not going to be able to just stand there and throw it over him unless you're 6'6". Six, six. Um, so that's kind of how I've done it. I, I haven't really had a 
ton of hard times being able to find people downfield. Um, there's just some situations where people get in your way and you got to move your feet and find throwing lanes. Well, one thing, you know, when I was at Fresno, right when I left to go to the Eagles, Devonte came in and Derek was already there. And obviously those two guys, and anytime you have a wide receiver, that's, you know, an NFL guy, you know, and, and you know, you see these scouts at practice. I mean, they're coming there. They're coming there for a reason. And you have a wide receiver, this Cropper kid. I mean, he fucking looks like an NFL player to me. So, I mean, they, they are watching this combination and I think both Derek and Devonte benefited. I mean, it was, it's a little different. You're smaller than Derek, but you know, I mean, do you, I mean, I'm sure you see some of these guys around the facility. Are they talking to you? Uh, what's yeah. what? I, technically, you have another year of eligibility, right? If you wanted to come back, where yeah. were you at with that whole thing? Um, you know, it's it's really tough uh, to. I don't know. You, you want to look at it. You want to pay attention, and you're obviously interested because it's it's been something that I've wanted to do for a really long time. Um, but you are kind of we're at the latter half of the season, and, and it's starting to get kind of down to you know, making a decision in the next month and a half, two months. Um, so I've talked about it with my family and have, uh, you know, had some resources to kind of tell me where I'm at with everything. And I'd really only leave if, you know, I was probably a day two guy. And I don't even know right now if that's possible. Um, you know, we'll see what happens. But um, you just try to keep playing at a high level and, and, and control what you can control. And there's going to be things for me, unfortunately, that are outside of my control, uh, like my height that probably is going to get knocked pretty hard um, at certain areas with certain teams. So I just try to do everything I can to produce at a high level and, and keep getting wins. So I haven't looked too far into the future. There's some things that I'm hearing um, invite wise from bowl games that I might get uh, senior bowl stuff, shrine bowl stuff that, you know, could potentially help, um, you know, open some eyes from scouts that get to see you in person and, you know, around, you know, a lot of different NFL teams. So, and compare you to the guys that are trying to go out right now. Um, but you definitely got to look at the guys in the class and see how the rest of the class stacks up against you. So it's definitely interesting. I, I mean, John and I talk about this all the time. Had, if Derek was coming out now, he would have been a first rounder. I mean, no question about yeah. it. Um, yeah. You know, he threw 50 touchdowns his last year. He came back yeah. after a year, he threw 37. I mean, you're, you're sixth in the nation in touchdowns. You're third in the nation in yards. Manning watch list, all the stuff I rattled off before. The production's definitely there. Have you? I know yeah. Derek gives out his number to every Fresno State quarterback, right? Does that like even does the walk on like fifth stringer get Derek's number, or does he only give it? How does that? I, work? Like this uh, I, I I've only talked. I don't know. I don't think the other guys have yet, but I'm sure when they get that opportunity to play, um, Derek will definitely reach out to him. And honestly, it's definitely something I probably need to reach out to Derek about because I'm sure he'll have a pretty good answer for me. You know, probably tell me right now to just focus on beating San Diego State on Saturday. Um, but, um, you know, I'll, I'll definitely probably reach out to him and see what his thoughts are. And I actually reached out to Jake Browning today, um, still a good friend of mine and somebody I trust, uh, and just asked him about the whole draft process. I know he went undrafted, but when he was a sophomore, he was looked at as a first, second round pick um, after that CFP season. Um, yeah. He was right there ended up staying two years and then goes and drafted so part of it's like do you go while you're hot or do you stay and kind of wait around to prove i mean what do you prove if you're like a guy like me i'm not going to get any taller um you know i'm going to get stronger and bigger and do that kind of stuff but i, I do i do think timing's on your side not necessarily whether it's this year or next year but just the height yeah. thing i mean i you know, I think a good comp for you, Gardner Minshew is a guy that when he went to Washington State and threw up all those numbers, I mean, he ended up getting drafted in the sixth round, you know, yeah. where five, ten years ago, no chance a guy of that size. Obviously, the top guy is getting drafted in the first round. I mean, if you produce and clearly your football intelligence and football character speak for itself, like you, you got a chance to get drafted for sure. I mean, whether it's this year or next year, it's got to be based on, you know, Cropper's draft eligible, right? He could leave. He's pretty yeah. good. He is pretty good. Um who knows, man? I mean, I also yes. I, I, I also enjoy being here. Um, and the thing is, I was talking to my dad last night about it. It's like, you don't get this back. You know, you only get to be in college once. I've been in college for a very long time now. So, I'm, you know, it, it feels like forever. I've been in college since 2017. I'll be a 60-year senior. Uh, I'll be, what, by the next football season, I'll be 23. Playing with 17, 18-year-olds, it's like, it's a big age gap. Um, 
<laughs> so I, I don't know. Um, you love being here. You love playing with your teammates and you only get to be in college once. Um, and there's, a, you know, a lot that I want to accomplish here and there's a lot, you know, to still accomplish. Um, and I don't know if coming back next year would, would just, you know, help me put up, you know, a legacy for myself and instill myself as one of the top quarterbacks to come through Fresno State. Uh, that's kind of what I also want to do. So got to look at it both ways. You fit in in the Valley too. For people who aren't from California or don't listen to the show, it seems like, you know, you're from Northern, you're from Danville, but Valley yeah. people are a special, like John and I are both not from there, but are went there and, you know, I got a 559 cell phone now. And anytime I call anybody that has any idea what the 559 is, they always, it comes up every single time. Yeah. Uh, you seem yeah. Like you fit. I, I, if, yeah, it feels natural, man. Uh, and I love the people here. Um, like I said, uh, you know, coming back next year and, and, you know, obviously wanting to win a championship this year, if we, if we end up doing that and trying to do another, uh, do a repeat and, and, and just continue to, to build the legacy that I, you know, am trying to build here and just keep it rolling. I mean, it's something that I really enjoy doing. You can't get, you know, like I said, you can't get it back and, and you only can play football for so long. So, and the NFL is not for long, like a lot of people say. So, yeah. As long no, as I'm not saying I'm not even talking about it in the context of like, are you going to go or stay? I'm just saying, not everybody that transfers right ends up in a spot that like becomes a place that is kind of like home for them. That's what it seems like you have. Yeah, no, I definitely got a lot of family here. Um, my parents are two hours away. Uh, they come for every game. They're here all the time, and uh, it definitely does feel like home. Uh, there's people here that I've known my whole life. I go to Shaver. Um, during the summer all the time there's there's a lot of people up there uh we have a great time of great friends with the sweeneys um have dinner at their house have dinner at the the andersons vials i mean there's just a lot of people that that i appreciate here and, and, and have taken me in so um i definitely enjoy it I, I would say the thing that makes fresno unique from a quarterback perspective for a guy that transferred from a power five school you know, most even Nevada or San Diego State, like they don't have the lineage of obviously the Carr brothers, but you know, yeah. I mean, Trent Dilfer was a top 10 pick. Billy Volick played in the league forever. I mean, this yeah. is a school that produced, I mean, NFL quarterbacks that, you know, I would say if you just look around the non Power Five programs, that is not the case with the Are there, How many Power guys. Five programs have David Carr, Derek Carr, Trent Dilfer, Billy Volick, Hayner? Can you play a little bit. Who's that? Sweeney. Sweeney. Yeah, Brand I mean, Brand Sander was drafted. Yeah, Pinnaker almost beat USC. Is that still talked about? That USC game still in lore? That is uh, that is. Talk, I, I hear about it every once in a while. Oh my god, it's yeah. on YouTube. I watch it once a year. The Reggie Bush game. Oh it's a, god, it's a pretty good. Like one. half of Reggie Bush's career highlights came from that game. I know it was rough. Pinnaker threw how, three, like five picks or something. But the, but the other thing with Fresno, like not even just the quarterbacks, like last weekend, Low Neal gets his number. I like guess it's, it's a powerful like NFL people that played at that program went on to have success on Sundays. Like it's just it's a football program, you know, in every sense you know, of the word. Definitely. And that's what I was looking at, too. when I was transferring. It's like if you want to try to get the next level, Fresno State's produced those people. Uh, they're known for that and they ha they have that kind of image. So. The old oil can is on the line this week. It is. It is. I mean, this is for first place in the in the division. Biggest, San Diego biggest State. game of the year. I mean, you look at UCLA, you look at Oregon, you look at Nevada. I mean, those those three games are obviously huge. But, um, you know, the more wins you get, each game continues to get bigger and bigger. And, uh, you know, this game's huge, man. San Diego this, State's unbeaten. Yeah, they're unbeaten going into their place. Uh, and this team loves, let me tell you, these guys – I know you you got to say you got to get up for every game, but this team gets up for big games. These guys get ready, and um, they live for these moments, and I'm excited to see what they can do. If you guys – what's on the line? Obviously, the Nevada game. Are you guys in the driver's seat now for the Mountain West? You guys control your own destiny? Is that the way you look yeah, at it for the, been, comfort, yeah, the conference championship um, game? Yeah. Uh, if we beat San Diego State this weekend, it, it, it's you know not a lock, but we got to keep winning. Um you definitely have the tiebreaker over the top two teams in my eyes, Nevada and San Diego on our side. Uh, so Nevada, I'm not sure they're going to lose another game. And same with San Diego um, if we don't beat them. So we would have two losses. And, yeah. and for us, that's tough because uh, it comes down to overall record um, if you don't have the tiebreaker over one of those teams. So 
um, just got to keep winning and uh, just continue what we're doing and playing physical football. Well, the team you just beat, is it Carson Strong? Is that the quarterback's mm-hmm. name? He, yeah. uh, I don't want to say he out dueled them because he was he put up big numbers in that game too. But you guys won the game. You played well. He played well. Came down yeah. to two point play. I mean that coming into that game, it was like Hanover Strong. I mean this is a guy that's getting a lot of NFL buzz too. Like wh- what was the focus in that game? Because obviously you don't play strong. You guys aren't on the field at the same time. But just yeah. the magnitude of that. That's a rivalry. I mean that, how many guys yeah. in the Nevada's team are from the Valley? It feels like half their roster. Yeah, no, I, I I definitely talked to him after the game. Was like, yeah, I'm kind of bummed we can't do this again next year. Um, because last year, the time we played them, it was a huge game too. Uh, whoever won it was in the driver's seat to go to the Mountain West Championship game, um, and and control their own destiny. And uh, they ended up getting us. And uh, you know, you hear all the draft buzz about him. He's a really good player, and you hear about their team and how many playmakers they have on the offensive side of the ball. And I got this on my phone. I don't know if you guys can see it. But it's uh, it's the preseason rankings of where we were supposed to finish. I don't even know if it's going to focus. It's not going to focus. It looks like oh, hold on, it just it looked like a Brett McMurphy tweet. It was a Brent McMurphy tweet. Where was the where to have you ranked? Had us ranked fourth in the West. Fourth in the seventh, West. Seventh, seventh in the entire conference. I see it every day, uh, and it had Nevada. It had Nevada first. Is it the, um, so it's like your it's like your screen backdrop. It's my screensaver. It's, it's my screensaver. When I click my phone on, that's what I see every day. I thought we were working. Uh, to see, haters, haters right. got, got a little chip on his shoulder. Yeah. He's got a little chip on his shoulder. I do, I do a little bit. And uh, I took that tweet. I printed out 150 copies um, right when they released it, and I pinned it. I wrote a little comment on it. Um, had some bad words in it, but I pinned it up on everybody's locker. Told everybody it's a mentality. Uh, and that we decide what we're going to do this year. Pinned it up on all 120 lockers. I went up to DeBoer's office. DeBoer wasn't there. Stamped it right on his laptop, right in his office. Put it on every coach's door. Uh, and that's kind of how we've you know gone through this season. We, we decide what we do, and it's up to us, man. It, it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. That's awesome. That is leadership. That is, that is sweet. That's a great idea. It's been fun, man. Uh, the, the guys respond, and um, there's definitely a little chip on our shoulder. The entire did, L- team. did Lorenzo talk to the team? They said on the broadcast oh, yeah. on Friday. Well, what was oh, that yeah. like? Oh yeah, that dude got us fired <laughs> up. Um, he basically just told us this like this little story. It, it, it went like uh, talked about a little dog and a big dog, and that the little dog every day the owner walked the big dog by the cage, the little dog would run out and bark as loud as he could. And he knew the cage was locked and he knew the big dog couldn't get him. The story goes on. The big dog looks at the little dog every day and knows that there's nothing even nothing to worry about. So he just keeps on going. One day the owner forgot to lock the door of the little dog's cage. The little dog ran out again, started barking, but the cage opened. And this dude, let me tell you, he's screaming when he's explaining the story. And He's basically comparing us to Nevada in that way. And Nevada was a little dog. They bark, they talk, they do everything like that. We're the big dog. We don't care. We just go about our business. We do everything we need to do to win. The caged open or the cage finally opened for the little dog. The little dog, big eyes open. It's like, oh shit, the cage is the cage is open. I gotta fight the big dog. The big dog rips the little dog up, throws him away, does whatever. And he goes, Boys, the cage is fucking open. Let's go. <laughs> that's pretty sweet <laughs> oh, no, it, it was awesome the dude was very passionate um and he was ready to roll so got the guys fired up and obviously worked i gotta check the details on the story but i i know it was definitely a jim sweeney fresno state team like at a hawaii bowl low neil might have been on the team they're staying mm-hmm. at a hotel where like you know those older hotels where the balconies of all the rooms face inside not to mm-hmm. the outside and it's, you know, 2, 3 a.m. You should ask the Sweeney's this story. Mm-hmm. And somebody's yelling, is there a dog in the house from one of the balconies? And Jim Sweeney starts barking. And the next thing you know, all the doors are opening. The players are coming out. Everyone's roo, 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 at 2, 2.30 a.m. in the morning. But check I'm, that story with the Sweeney's. I'll, I'll ask Bo. I'm going to see Bo this week. I'll definitely ask him. Yeah, tell him I saw Bo last weekend. Tell him Middlecoff says, what's up? He, he can I swing it a little bit back in the day. Dude, I know. He can... <laughs> I love playing golf with that guy. Definitely have a great time whenever we go out on the course. Um, How much golf are you playing during season? 
I haven't played at all. I played actually, no, that's a lie. I played during the bye week once at San Joaquin. Um, and I, I haven't picked a club up since. Um, I wish I could, but I don't have time. Have you, have you already? What yeah, would you shoot? A rusty 76. Uh, uh, no, I only played nine. I shot like 37 on the front and we stopped. Um, I mean, it was whatever. We definitely, when I have time in the summer, I definitely love to play. When I first got here, I, I showed up and, and Bo, Bo had heard that I played golf or whatever. And I show up, I, I swear I hadn't been playing. And I just start playing every day um, with these guys because I was ineligible. And I was a plus three shooting 66 like consistently. <laughs> And these guys are like, dude, why does it say your handicap's a, a three? You're a plus three. And I'm shooting 66. They're giving me all these strokes, and I'm just taking all their money. It was, <laughs> it was awesome, though. Have you already uh, peaked at San Diego State? Have, yes. Yes, I have. I uh, watched them last night for an hour and a half. Um, and then I went in this morning at about 8.30 and, and watched uh, – what game did I watch? Watched our New Mexico State game. So. When you like when you first watch an opponent before you get the game plan and stuff, like what do you – What's your like goat? What are you looking for? You just watch over yeah. you, or you watch something specific? Yeah. So on uh, Sunday night, I just like to breeze through a couple games, kind of see how they play, what their mentality is like, uh, and, and see their base structure. Um, and I've seen their base structure before because we played New Mexico last year and they had, you know, obviously Rocky. Yeah. Uh, was their DC and they, they do the same, you know, same scheme. They um, came after you in that game. They did. And, and I'm sure they're going to do the same thing. They, they do a lot of exotic blitzes and, and stuff like that, and they like to try to change the picture late on me. Um, but you know, I, I like to kind of just scheme through and, and see what you know, see what their base tendencies are, if they have any, see what their uh, you know, their main coverage shell is, what they get into, um, how much man they're playing because that's a big thing for us, obviously, getting in and out of checks, um, on third downs and how much pressure they bring on third down, um, is a big thing for us too. So just kind of seeing what they do, seeing how their players are, see what kind of personnel they have, and and see who you know we want to attack. So I'd imagine you guys get the game plan tomorrow. We're recording this on Monday, so you meet the coaches on Tuesday. Are you going back and forth with the OC, some of the position coaches today, yeah. like just texting and stuff, Peyton Manning style, you know? Or uh, you yeah, no, I I went in this morning and and uh, went over the whole scouting report. We got that today. I got to do a personnel sheet tonight um, on them, and, and you know talk about their fronts. Uh, talk about their main pressures, talk about their personnel, things like that. And then this morning I met with Grubb, talked about, you know, our scheme, our run game scheme, what we like, um, what he likes, what worked in the past, and, uh, you know, some of the base checks that he's thinking on normal downs for us to get in and out of and stuff that I see, you know, what I like, and uh, just kind of pick my brain off of what I saw in the first couple games. Jake, go get him. Can't wait, man. Big win. It's great baby. talking to you, man. Let's keep it rolling. Thanks for having me on, guys. No, it was awesome. Um, we're excited about it. Team's ready to go and got to bring another championship back, man. That's what we're trying to go do. Dogs. Yeah. Go, go, dogs. Dogs, <laughs> Thanks, go, Jake. Dogs. Thanks, 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 guys. Go Dogs. Go Dogs. Go Dogs. Thanks,